thank you for coming into another Cold Painting Table tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at the Lamplighters from Malibu. Okay, so we are going to take a look at the Lamplighters from the Yedza Core Box. These are the seeker keyword for the Explorer Society in Malifo. I have three of these suckers that are part of this tutorial. The one that's on screen right there won't be part of it uh, outside of the first uh, greening, I should say. Now we're going to work through three different greens here. It's going to be Despair Green from Fantasy and Games, and then Arvin Jade from Fantasy and Games, and then Greenish White. Now you can see I've chosen those colors just looking at the back of the box here because they really have that sort of green color um, as we're going across. So I started off with a black primer and then a zenithal white uh, using a white ink. And in this case, we're just going to fire up the airbrush. Uh, here we're using a Harder and Steenback CR Plus uh, with a point, the smaller needle, I can't remember which, which point it is. And we're just filling in all the places that we want to be the green. Now, the interesting thing about this color is that it is quite translucent already, so you might need to get a couple coats. If you go lighter on it, um, you actually get to take advantage of a lot of the Xenothal that we did before. Each one of these has a different amount of the green on them. Uh, this will be the tying color that I have across this whole crew. So. Your mileage may vary depending on how much you want to airbrush here. I just found it quicker to start slapping down base coats for everything that needed to be this green across the crew. So it would be these lamplighters and then in addition Yetza herself and then Mikhail the 16th. They would all have the same level of green being worked on them. With the Despair Green all dried, we're going to start going in with the primary color, which will be Arfin Jade. Again, these colors from Fantasy and Games are quite uh, thin uh, and translucent, so uh, layers upon layers upon layers is what's required here to make sure that we're going to get a solid base of where we want uh, the bright uh, light points to be. In this case, uh, I was really following the art for <laughs> specifically this lamplighter, that there is um, a, a light source coming down basically in the front over top of his right shoulder, so the front of his pointy hat will be a little bit brighter than the rest of it. And then for this guy, I was going with a light source over top of his right shoulder, um, more from behind, um, or, or slightly to the side, so you can see that um, it'll draw shadows uh, appropriately. Now in this section, we're just going to start adding in greenish white to Arf and Jade. I can't give you an exact ratio that I'm using here. Um, it's simply to the point that I uh, wanted the next step of highlight to be. If you want to go very, very gradually, it'll take a long time, a lot of steps. Uh, if you want to be a little bit more stark, you're more than welcome to do that as well. But this is where we can slowly start building up gradients for how uh, bright we want things to be. I had an idea looking at the back of the box that was earlier in the video about how bright I really wanted the green here to be. So I knew that after the Arp and Jade, it'd probably be one or two steps um, to brighten up to the lightest point that I wanted these models to have. So you can see this is the the, the last step for highlighting. Um, I added just a little bit more. Uh, I 
you can see that a little bit off screen. I apologize for that. Still trying to get the uh, uh, placement with the new mat uh, where everything needs to be. Uh, so it's a little bit lower on the screen where I want it to, than I wanted it to be, but you can see that I'm being really selective now where I want these brightest points to be and making sure that it's not going to bleed over too much into the other areas. The nice thing though is if you remember me stating earlier, um, the Despair Green and the Arthen Jade are both rather thin paints, so we can use those to glaze back in to reclaim some of our darker shadows um, if we do end up getting overspray in any specific area. Um, so after this step as well, the this this lamplighter won't be really part of the the videos because like the rest of her colors are substantially different than the other two. But it does give you uh, an idea of how you can play with volumes and where you want the the light to be, looking at how her jacket goes and moves around the model. So I gave everything a quick varnish because it's always good to varnish in between your layers uh, and then I, uh, I blocked everything out as well. I had the idea that these folks travel a lot with Yedza. Uh, she kind of collects a disparate amount of things to wander the world with her according to the storyline and I figured that a lot of their overcoats would be beaten leather um, because it is kind of a western-ish style game. So here we're going in with Pro Krill's Dark Umber, just blocking out the places that I think should be leather. Um, as you, you, if you get a closer look at these these models, they remind me a lot like uh, Vivi from Final Fantasy IX. They, I don't know if they're human, I don't know what their deal is, but uh, there's something's going on with them, that's for sure.
to highlight all the leather points, we go in with just with the airbrush, and we're gonna airbrush in light umber from Pro Acryl. The final highlight on this leather will be uh, Pro Acryl's Light Umber and then AK Interactive 3rd Generation Pale Flesh. And this is the point where I realized I didn't like the way that the leather was looking. So I grabbed a bit of sponge and some orange-brown from AK Interactive, third generation, and started stippling because I wanted that leather to have a lot more texture. And I think it fits the aesthetic a little bit more and it gives some good contrast of texture. So the boots and the coat would be more worn compared to the green vest and hat that the characters have. So contrast can come in a lot of ways. Before we were mixing in light flesh with the light umber to be the uh, brightest point. Um, but, so we're going to go with that light flesh again, this time stippling, uh, and not mix with light umber. So it's going to be a fair bit thicker and uh, more opaque. It won't be nearly as translucent. And it'll give us a final step to show the wear of the leather. And we're going to go into magic leather recipes right after this.
This is one of my favorite quick ways to get a nice leather effect. Uh, this is Vallejo Model Color Smoke. It is inherently very thin, uh, almost gloopy. It's not uh, runny like it would in ink, but it is quite transparent. And with all the stippling and airbrushing work that we did before, it's going to homogenize, bring it all together to make it look rather uh, into a rich red-brown, and uh, I think it sells off leather quite well. One to two coats, depending on, on how dark you want your leather to be, is all that you would really need here to base out what you're looking for. Once the smoke's all on, uh, I do like to go back in with a thin down black. At this case, I'm just using uh, the black primer that I was using uh, to, to re-black everything out between the initial airbrushing step, uh, thin down just to reinforce some shadows uh, underneath the uh, cloak or, or, or duster that he's wearing and then around his boots. With the leather all done, it's time to paint his pants. So we're gonna go in with Pro Curl's Dark Warm Gray to base coat everything that we want to be a dark gray. To highlight it up, we're just going to take some of that light flesh that was on the palette, mix it in with the dark warm gray, and just build up some successive highlights uh, wherever the light sources think that uh, it should go. We are going to stick with Pro Acryl for the white sections of these models. It's not a lot, it was basically I think this, this guy's glove and his undershirt underneath that vest, but we're going to base coat it with uh, Pro Acryl's light warm grey, um, just to kind of stick in the, the lighter tones as we're going across these models. Again, they're called lamp lighters, I'm assuming that they have a bit of light around them. Uh, nothing here is too directional, obviously, it's very... Uh, omnipresent, so if you really want to go to town, I'm sure you could do a 
form of like reverse OSL in which no, I guess it would just be normal OSL uh, coming off the lamp behind him uh, and then dark in the front, although I don't know how well that would read. Uh, but who knows? It could be could be a completely different way to paint these things if you want to go beyond just getting a tabletop model ready. It's hard to focus in on just the hand. Um, the camera really wants to, to focus on, I guess, my fingers more than anything right now. But we're just going to start off highlighting with Deck Tan from AK Interactive. And then the last highlight here for the white sections will be Ivory from AK Interactive. I, uh, I, I missed uh, a piece of footage here, so the candles were just base coated in a beige uh, and then given a uh, all over wash of plate bearer flesh contrast paint. And now the fur on the back of this guy's uh, duster is going to be uh, Pro Krill Light Umber and then just mixed in with some of that ivory to brighten it up as we're going across. It's working wet on wet to get the blend just on quick and natural enough looking. Again, nothing too special on this clip, uh, just showing how we're going to start working with the base. Uh, it is going to be just uh, thinned down black everywhere. Uh, if people were wondering on how I did these bases, this is a really old, um, I guess, green stuff before rollers were rollers square that you'd press uh, putty down once it's on the base. But Green Stuff World makes a ton of rollers that you could work with Malifo really easily. So we put so much effort into everything else, uh, and the green, uh, the green stuff bases that I have here have enough texture in them already. I'm just going to grab a nice medium-sized makeup brush and start stippling around the feet, making sure that we're not going to get paint on all the work that we did before already. But you can see that uh, this is just rough and ready base, base work. Uh, I'm sure that you can appreciate if we're spending this time much time on models uh, if we can cut corners elsewhere we're going to so the bases themselves were just green stuff molds um, and then a bit of texture paste over top of it just to break up some of the concrete feeling and we're just grabbing some of the lighter tones that we have on our palette mixing them in as we're going across aiming the makeup brush in the middle ish areas so it's not going to necessarily uh, lighten all the cracks once everything's uh, dried.
once the base is paint, we're all dried, uh, let them sit there for a little while, we're gonna just all over slap on Agrax Earthshade. Uh, it'll sit, settle into all the, uh, the cracks, uh, making sure all the tile stones are separated, and uh, do <laughs> what I needed it to do. There's not a lot special about So with the base done, I gave it a complete varnish on how I wanted the model to be. I like to use AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish um, for 99% of the things that I'm painting. And once that's all dried and cured, I'm going to go in and we're going to start working on metals. Now for metals, uh, metallics are metallic paints are not really a dime a dozen. There are very good ones and there are very bad ones. I like to stick with either Pro Acryl, Vallejo Metal Color, or uh, Scale 75. In this case, we're using copper from Vallejo Metal Color uh, for everything that I want to be copper, bronze, whatever you want to, to, to tone it. Um, so there's some buttons along his pants, there's the lamps on both sides. Uh, that's what we're going to be coloring in here. If there was a downside to the Metal Color series is that there are a thousand silver tones and there are essentially two non-silver tones and that would be gold, copper, and pale burnt metal would be the three that I would say there. So in this case I just mixed some pale burnt metal in with the copper and a little bit of gold to get this highlight color. Now you're like maybe looking at it and saying like, hey, those are those are substantially different colors. Um, that's okay. We're going to go through and give it a, a glaze, wash, whatever you want to call it, with ink afterwards to bring it all together. For the very limited silver pieces, I wanted a darker, browner metal, so we're going to use uh, Vallejo uh, Metal Color Exhaust Metal for this, uh, and apparently I don't get the model on screen for quite a while, and really it's going to be just the chain on this guy and a little bit of like, the backpack.
in order to tie in all of the bronze highlights and everything that we did, um, I'm going to just grab a brush load of uh, transparent burnt umber from Liquitex inks um, and give it a wash. Uh, a side benefit of this specific wash is that uh, the ink dries kind of glossy as well, so it does help the metallics still read as metallics. Unlike, say, something like um, Agrax Earthshade that dries more satin or matte, uh, that wouldn't allow the metallics to read as metallic, they would be much darker. Uh, and again, apologies for this guy just being on the side. A uh, quick wash and all oil for the dirtier silvers that I want to be uh, less lustrous. We're in the home stretch. We're going to use AK Interactive Pastel Blue to block out the sections of the lamps that would be glass where we have the light poking through. Uh, note that I also went through with white on all the candles and on their eyes to make sure that uh, the next steps will be nice and poppy in terms of All right, uh, this is yellow green from Vallejo Model Color uh, in the airbrush to make things. Uh, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. So uh, <laughs> with with the brush for all the candles and the eyes, uh, and it will be through the airbrush for all of the lamps, lamps and lanterns. Uh, and excellent shots of my my hair and my head. Uh, Want to call out uh, headshots, uh, Hollywood. Here we go. And at the end, this is what we're taking a look at. Um, not too bad, uh, two miniatures done um, in about 45 minutes of filming. Um, uh, total paint time, so I'm, I'm happy with how they turned out. Uh, they're really cool, uh, creepy little guys, and like again, they look like BB from Final Fantasy, which makes me just super, super happy. So thank you for watching this tutorial on Malifaux's Lamplighters. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please hit like. Uh, if you hit subscribe, I have a pretty good cadence of getting things out on Sundays right now, uh, so we're going to keep on trucking along with that. I'm not sure what we're going to do for the next video. Uh, I might keep on working through the um, core box, um, just shorter videos taking a look at how we can expand um, what we learned on this video into the other miniatures, and then uh, maybe branching out into some bigger pieces uh, that I have in mind. Um, but anyways, toss a comment below if you have a direction that you'd like to see me go. Um, hopefully my painting whims can align with what you're hoping to see as a video. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you again in the future. Bye.